So Chris, talk to us. You, you've told us about some of the trends um, uh, as, as it relates to current travel at the airport, uh, but tell us about projections, if you would, um, when we might see travel return to some level of normalcy and touch on that, if you would, continuing on the global side of it, because I think that's, you know, we, we talk about the international travel not being, nobody can get here at the moment, but when it does come, do we expect it to be like the floodgates opening? What do you anticipate? Thank you. I'll say just a moment ago, you heard Maria you know, talking about all of those markets where people are, are coming from. And uh, over the last 10 years, we've connected to just about every single one of them. Um, you know, the pandemic has forced us to retool and I'm, I'm really delighted to be able to tell you, it took us about 30 days to pivot from our prior approach where we would have maybe two meetings a year with our airline network planning partners at the individual airlines. Um, we're now meeting every single month um, with Craig and his team, along with our chambers of commerce and our convention visitors bureaus to make sure that we're gathering all of the current information about the pulse of our market. And then we're meeting every single month virtually with the decision makers at those airlines to make sure they know what's happening here. And that's a big driving factor of why we've seen our capacity coming back faster is those airlines, they know that they're gonna learn something when they're talking with us. They learn why those passengers are back on the flight, not just the fact that the passengers are back on the flight. Before the pandemic, we had about 22 million passengers annually. And we, it, it's, it's hard to say, you know, how long it's going to take for us to get back to that number. Right now, our recovery forecast would have us getting back to 22 million passengers in about three years. It's been a pretty linear recovery so far but I feel like it could be asymmetrical as we look over the horizon um, for a couple of reasons. I think one, for all the reasons that were articulated a moment ago, our market from a business mm -hmm. standpoint and an employment standpoint, it's a roaring boil with a lid on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that as soon as people um, you know, feel safe to, to get out and travel again, that lid comes off, boom, everyone is gonna, gonna wanna be out traveling. That's one piece. Two is just the fact that you know, we continue to win global recognition as, as a destination for this region. And so I think those are gonna be important factors. In terms of the recovery of traffic, what we see is that leisure is definitely recovering before business because companies are looking at you know, the opportunity for, for COVID infections and those kinds of things say, you know, I, we just don't need to take that risk right now. Let's, let's hold back. We're getting close. All of the surveys and all of the data that I've seen, especially in the last four weeks, tell us that businesses are about to put their folks back on the road. Um, the, the second piece is that, uh, is that people, I think just generally speaking, are, are wanting to get back out and, and visit their friends and relatives all across the country. So we talked at the beginning of this discussion about the fact that we have both a strong business market for outbound demand and a strong leisure market for inbound demand. When you then recast that for international, Domestic is definitely recovering faster than international. Why? It's because of travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that from, from a year ago to now, we've seen our international carriers, every single one of them have reloaded their flights into the system. And then as soon as there is a pivot by one of the governments to say, okay, well now we're gonna have a quarantine period or now there's a testing requirement, immediately the, the reservations dry up and the airline has to pull that out of the system and then move it back a couple of months. We talked about um, London and British Airways. And, uh, and so we've been speaking with them. They're coming back this summer. We just met with Lufthansa this week. They're coming back this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, Copa Airlines has already come back. Uh, we've got uh, Southwest Airlines is flying to Havana um, daily. And so all, all of these international markets, they want to come back and, and they will thrive. But you know, I, I think that we're just at this really strange interstitial moment. And as soon as we get past the, the health concerns, which I, I really genuinely believe that we're, we're just inches from it, I, I think that you're gonna see things recover dramatically. Yeah. Chris, I'll, and listen, since I'm in the private sector, I can do this, <laughs> that I, I believe it won't be three years that you'll see it in 18 months getting, getting back to that number. That when everybody feels comfortable in the summer, 12 months later, you'll, you're, you know, 18 months, when you look at the 12, 12 or the trailing 12 months, you'll see that 22 million. Because I just think it's gonna accelerate very quickly with the added effect of what we're seeing with mm -hmm. net migration. 
Tampa and all those other factors that we talked mm -hmm. about. And okay. I'm very bullish on that. I'll, I'll just say, because the mayor uh, sits on our board at the airport as well. So she knows for sure, not only you know, have we seen the reduction in traffic, we've seen the reduction in related revenues. Yeah. You know, we anticipate that because of COVID, there's about $340 million of business that just is not going to materialize at the airport. But when we look over the horizon, when we get back to that 22 million annual passenger level, we were right on the precipice of moving forward with a new 16 gate airside to meet demand for international travel. We still need to be ready for that. And so all of the steps that we're taking right now from an economic point of view are preserving our capacity to, to re-accelerate and be able to deliver that capacity because we don't ever want to be the short pole in the economic development tent of mm -hmm. Tampa Bay region.